<clears throat> All right, guys. Um, hey, thank you for joining us today. This is uh, another, this is our first webinar for uh, this semester coming up. Uh, this one is going to be really introducing you guys to Design Safe, what all the tools are available for you, uh, how you can use this into your, how you can integrate this into your research platforms, and a little bit of background of what Design Safe is. Um, and then we'll, we'll go through a little bit of a slide deck to kind of give you kind of a, a foreshadowing of what we're going to show you when we actually go and do our hands on. So we're going to do a walkthrough of what the Design Safe site looks like, what tools are available, how these tools work, how these tools are integrated. Uh, and then we'll go into a little bit of a demonstration um, where you guys can launch the site yourself, load up some data, uh, create a project, uh, collaborate with the project with other people, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. So this is Design Safe, and Design Safe is a cyber infrastructure for the natural hazards community. Uh, it's got a, it's, we've got a grand vision here, and we're making strides towards it, is we want this infrastructure to be an integral, dynamic part of your research discovery. So we want this to be ex essentially be the tool that you will use for your research work. Uh, we want to be able to support analysis, visualization, integration, and of, uh, of all uh, data types. So we don't want to restrict you on what data type you use or what your uh, data model looks like. We want to be able to import that into Design Safe and use it accordingly. We want to support your research workflow. We want to support your research workflow from one end of the spectrum all the way to the other. From conceptualizing your project, building your team of researchers, uh, giving you the tools to be able to advance your project all the way to publish your data and publishing your work. And of course, we want to enhance, amplify, and link the capabilities of other, the, of other NERI components. All right. So let's look a, bit, a little bit how this all fits together. So to enable your research, our plan is uh, we have what we call the data depot and we have a discovery workspace. Those are the two parts. Uh, these are the two parts which are basically the, the core uh, features of Design Safe, of the Design Safe cyber infrastructure. So, with this, what we want is we won't be able to have the, the uh, simulation researchers, uh, your experimental researchers, and your rapid researchers to be able to do their experiments, do their modeling, gather their data, and be able to store that data in our data depot, which is a cloud based resource. Once it's there, we can then do our, uh, we can bring that into the discovery workspace, which is essentially a, a collection of tools, including MATLAB, uh, AdCERC, OpenSeas, OpenFoam, a bunch of uh, all these applications to be able to do data analysis, to do your visualization, uh, to do some animation. Um, and then finally, we will be able to curate that data together and be able to publish it. And once that data is published, you'll be able to have a DOI, a link to it, and be able to link to that data and for, for your publications, for your research, uh, and, and, and any future needs you might have. So this is what our big grand view is. So now is basically how do we put this thing together? What we'll do is we're going to go through a quick little design safe walkthrough. Uh, this way you guys have a heads up of what you're going to be seeing when we actually go to the site. <clears throat> the first thing we're going to look at, well, the main thing that we're going to look at here is the research workbench. All right. Uh, there's others also. You can have access to the NERI community. Uh, you, can have, you can view all the NERI facilities and link to our learning center. Uh, by the way, the learning center is where these webinars are archived at. So any of the data that I use today, any of the, all the slides that I have will be archived there as well. All right. So your uh, research workbench is essentially the heart of the Design Safe CI. Uh, this is where you're going to go to actually that we're, we're giving you guys to enable your research. You have the data depot, you have the discovery workspace, there's where you go for user support. Uh, the, if you go to the developers portal, which is 
potentially still under development. The developers portal does have some uh, documentation on how to use the site, how to use our API, uh, how to be able to do uh, command line interfacing. And then finally, uh, the getting started pages. All right, so let's go into the data depot and talk about that a little bit. All right, so the first thing we have is the data depot. The data depot essentially is, uh, it's your file space. This is your very own space where you can upload your data, you can upload your scripts. Uh, we want be, you to be able to share your data there, share your scripts, share your text files, be able to load photographs, uh, be able to uh, load any archive information you need. And it's gonna be essentially what it is with all that different types of files that you can put inside there. It is a multi-purpose data repo, which means we want this thing to be, uh, we want this, to fit your needs, all right? Uh, so whatever your needs are, you'll be able to load those files in. Uh, and it's gonna give you a, a flexible data model so we can basically accept any kind of data that you have. It could be a text file, it could be uh, an XML file, it could be uh, a, a XAML files as well. Whatever you guys have, whatever it is that you need to enable your research, you can load it in here and use it in your applications. <clears throat> So let's go through the research, uh, the data depot really quick. So the data depot is made up, this is when you click on it, this is what it comes up. Essentially it is a, a file manager, all right? We have, you have different types of files, you have directories, you have folders, subfolders, uh, and you have an entire list of them. And then of course you could do things, you could download the data to your local machine, you could upload new data to it and uh, whatnot. But it acts just like, uh, just like you would expect a, uh, a file um, a file system, a file manager to act. <clears throat> so the my data is the big place. The my data is a place to save your files. Uh, these could be from scripts, these could be the data, these could be reports, these could be photographs like I mentioned. Everything you need for your research, this is essentially where you can store it. All right, this, the next thing we have is something brand new. It's called my projects. Now my projects is separate from my data. My projects is its own file system. Essentially, this is created to be able to enable collaboration between the design safe community. You'd be able to go here, set up a project, uh, assign a PI, uh, assign other members to the project, what role these members will have on the project, and, and be able to collaborate on the data. So essentially, everybody can then therefore have, uh, have access to it, be able to modify it, Add new, uh, add new materials, new folders, uh, new files, anything that's necessary for that project. <clears throat> and once your project is done, you want to publish and complete it, essentially it, it would be, it's coming down the line is where you can freeze a project, so all of your links will go back to that published data and you can continue working on the project and not, and not uh, disrupt the publication flow. Next, we have a shared with me. Now shared with me is a little different than my projects. My projects is used for collaboration. Shared with me are files which are explicitly shared with you by other members of the design safe community. So what we have there is a little screenshot of the of files that have been shared with me on my account uh, from different students, uh, from different researchers, from other collaborators, people wanna share files with me, uh, have my opinion on things, and they can share those directly. <clears throat> Finally, we have what we call the published data, all right? Published data is data which is publicly available. This data has been published in works, it has been cited in works, and now you can come to DesignSafe and view, those, uh, view what the citation is. Uh, a DesignSafe account is not required to access the published data. This data is available publicly. So you can just log on to Design Safe without an account, go to the data depot, and be able to search the published data. And of course, if you wish to do work on the published data, you can copy that into your Design Safe account or into your data section, into your My Data, and be able to do your uh, use this against your research. Okay. Next after this is coming up is the research workbench. All right, next in the research workbench rather is the discovery workspace. This is a place where all of your tools are located at. This is a place for you to do your research. 
Uh, this is essentially where the heart of design safe is. This is why it will become a, 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 a you'll find a very useful tool in your, uh, in your research. Uh, this is basically where you can go to allow, uh, allow you to do uh, simulations uh, where you can analyze your data using some of the popular open source simulation codes like OpenSeas, AdCirc, uh, OpenFoam, and there's commercial tools available as well. There is, we do have a MATLAB uh, instance running on DesignSafe. Now, if you wish to use MATLAB, there you need to fill out a ticket uh, and put down your email address on it. Usually you need an EDU email address and then we could grant a license for you. And once the license to be granted, you can then launch MATLAB through DesignSafe. Okay, so once we get into the to the discovery workspace, we're we're you're going to see a uh, a big toolbar, right? The top of the discovery workspace is where all of the applications are listed. These are all the apps that you can run on DesignSafe, you know, uh, and some some tools that are available for you as well. So you can uh, compress folders, you can untar and tar up files, and you create a tarball, uh, just select the files you need and um, and extract it. If you have a tarball in there, you can extract it, select all the files you have, and you can compress those into a, uh, through a folder. This is where also where you have access to AdCirc, OpenSeas, OpenFoam, uh, MATLAB, ParaView for visualization, and uh, whatnot. Uh, each app, when you open it, comes up with a little screen. It uh, shows you basically a bunch of, it's like a little form. It has some text boxes in there that are required for you to run the application. Uh, you'll also see a quick little description of what the app is. There's also a link to the documentation. So once you click on the documentation link, you can then uh, uh, read through it and see exactly how to run this app. Uh, all the apps are documented. All right, one of, the, one of the biggest ones, or most popular ones that we have, of course, is MATLAB, uh, because you know, it's a licensed software, not everybody has a license, but you can get a license through DesignSafe and your EDU account. All right, so to run MATLAB, uh, you select MATLAB from the, uh, from the top bar, comes up with this form. Uh, essentially, fill out all the necessary details, and when you're ready, you just click Run and it'll execute a job, for example, this, and uh, it'll say, all right, the job's been submitted. Then it's gonna say, hey, your interactive session has started. So all you have to do is click connect and it connects to your interactive session and it gives you essentially a virtual desktop, it's a VNC session. Where MATLAB pops up, you have access to all your files, you have access to all your data, you have access to your My Data files, so then you could go ahead and run your apps. All right. <clears throat> And the last thing we have is Jupyter, and we're gonna do a walkthrough on Jupyter as well. Uh, a lot of people always wonder, well, what is a Jupyter notebook? So a Jupyter notebook, in a, in a nutshell, you know, we have the description right here on the slide, it's a web-based interactive computing tool for capturing computation process, developing, execution, whatnot. What it really, what all that means, it, it is a programming environment that is available on a website. So you can go to this website, you can type in your code, and you can then run your code and it'll actually run on, uh, on our clusters here locally. But it does a little bit more than just that. It is also a, the way I view it is, uh, so all right, a little bit about how these notebooks work and whatnot. Uh, is, you can read about this if you like. Essentially what it is, this notebook is running uh, on a website. You're connecting through the website. It's taking your username and it's creating a, uh, a container just for you to run your code in, all right? Um, what we use Jupyter Notebooks for is, imagine it being kind of like a uh, experimentation or a lab, laboratory notebook, all right? So back in the day, I tell the story a lot, back in the day my father uh, got his PhD in aerospace engineering. Uh, he used to work in a wind tunnel. So for all of his uh, experiments that he had to run, he had to keep a detailed notebook on what all the settings were, what all the parameters are, uh, and what all the uses were. The idea being, hey, somebody else can come along, take his notebook, and reproduce his data. Well, a Jupyter notebook is essentially the same thing, except now it is for your code. So now your program can be very well documented, your program can be split up into pieces, and it's a natural transgression, uh, or national uh, traversion of what your program can become, of how it's pieced together, 
uh, what the different variables are. You can put controls in there so you can actually control what the variables do and plot data out. All right, and then we're gonna launch Jupyter uh, through the discovery workspace in, as a menu option called Jupyter. You select that, it's gonna say, all right, you're ready to proceed to the Jupyter Hub. So what I'm talking about, the Jupyter Hub is essentially a proxy which you go through and it creates this container environment for you. Uh, it's gonna ask you to log in because technically it needs to know who you are to be able to log you through because we're actually going to a different uh, node to run this. Click login, type in all your information, click and in, click start my server and it'll fire up your notebook. One little thing you might, one thing you have to do before doing anything in your notebook is you have to go into your my data folder. Uh, when you get into the my data folder, that is where all your information is stored at. So if you create any notebooks and you save your files, you're going to want to save it in the my data. If you save it anywhere else, it could very well be cleared out. Actually, it will be cleared out and you'll, uh, you'll lose your info. All right. <clears throat> we'll go a little bit of structure on, that, on the notebooks here in a little bit. Uh, for now, um, if everybody's still with me here, we're going to go ahead and launch into uh, Design Safe. All right, and I'm gonna go and scroll back so we can walk through the slides and we can walk through uh, what we're doing with Design Safe as well. All right, so I have a browser open over here with uh, Design Safe launched up. It, I've already logged in. Um, if you haven't logged in yet, please do so. If you need to get an account, uh, there, if there is actually a link and it says, all right, create a Design Safe account. It'll uh, walk you through. All right. <clears throat> So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the research workbench. So we're gonna go ahead and click the research workbench. We can also click here and access uh, any of our, our the research workbench options directly, but I'm gonna go ahead and click on the big tile. So that takes us to uh, this section of the site. We have the data depot, the discovery workspace. We're gonna just do a complete walkthrough of what we did on our, our slides. All right, so we're gonna go click on the data depot. Like I said, this launches and this essentially comes up as a, uh, essentially in a file manager. Okay, so what are the things that we can do inside of our data depot? Well, the first thing we can do is you'll see that we, uh, I have a list of files here. Uh, some of you may not have list, uh, had any files or this might be your first time in Design Safe, so it might be kind of empty. But I have a lot of files here and I will be absolutely honest with you, I should really um, do a little bit more, a better job organizing these files. I should actually put things in different folders and whatnot, but of course we can add folders as we want. All right, so one of the things we can do is we can look at, we can look at some information. So I have a, uh, this, an Excel file. I should be able to preview that. Oh, this preview's not available for that, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I can preview any of my notebooks. So these, these are all my IPython notebooks. Um, I also have, Let's look at this uh, intro to plotting with R. This will come up and it should come up with a preview for it as well. So I can see what the notebook looks like. Uh, this is what my notebook looks like. I have a bunch of data inside there, it looks like. Um, oh, looks like I'm also plotting a sine curve there. Uh, so I'm making some modifications. Looks like I'm opening up a file here and looking at what the data looks like and then running some graphs on that file based on what the information is. Let me go and maximize this window so we can look at that a little bit better. <clears throat> also, once we're here, I can also download the file to my local machine. I can share the file with other people in the Design Safe, uh, Design Safe environment. In fact, if I click share, it will go ahead and check to see who it's shared with already. Uh, and then I can add other names. So I can add, say, one of my coworkers, Juni. Click his, click his username there. I can select what, uh, what permissions I want to give him. So I'm going to go ahead and give him read write, and I'm going to go ahead and save the share settings. And it's going to go ahead, the way, so the way Design Safe works is this is a interface to a cloud resource, all right? So we have uh, a machine sitting in our data center uh, that is running Design Safe. This is the interface to it. So whenever we make any kind of request, for example, me requesting 
uh, the system give access to Juni uh, for read-write purposes, it is actually creating a request on the machine that gets queued up. And as soon as that queue executes, you probably saw on my screen, I got a little uh, notification saying, hey, this file has now been shared with Juni. And if I click on share again here, oh, uh, that's weird. I didn't update. <clears throat> Let's look at the details again on that. And that's the other thing as well. Because this is happening on, this is an interface to a cloud resource. So we have the design safe environment here and the cloud resource in the back. Uh, it takes a while for things to go to the resource and then come back and uh, refresh the page. So anyways, let's, uh, Let's look at the share settings now. Hmm. It'll show up here in a little bit. Uh, Junie will also get a notification saying that, hey, a new file has been shared with you. All right. <clears throat> so that's where your data is stored at. Now, let's uh, continue on down to the big one, the newest thing that we have introduced called My Projects. So My Projects is for you to be able to collaborate projects with other people. Uh, this is essentially what is going to be the heart of Design Safe. I mean, Design Safe, what we're really trying to do here is to get the entire community to collaborate together on projects, collaborate together on research. Um, so this is the first step we've taken to be able to enable that kind of collaboration. So what I can do here is I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. And I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to click add. We have the option new folder or new project. I'm going to say new project. I'm going to give this a title. Uh, I'm going to say uh, this is a project. And I'm going to go ahead and give myself um, the PI on this. And I'm going to go ahead and click Save Project. All right, so the project's been created. Uh, folder's empty. There's nothing in here yet, uh, so I can add some things if I need to. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to manage team members. And what I am, I have two accounts on Design Safe. This is my other account. I am going to go ahead and add that other account. And I'm going to flip between the users. So you can see what adding files does on one and adding files does to the other. And save collaborator settings. By the way, you will always see this design safe administrator. Uh, this is a required uh, account that make sure everything is running properly. So you cannot remove, you know, it's a little, uh, the do not sign comes up. You cannot remove the design safe administrator from any of your file permissions, but you will see that thrown about the site. All right, save collaboration settings. Make sure that went through. So here I am, Charlie Day, this is my, uh, Yahoo account that I have set up with that account, uh, with that uh, other account. And I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of this. Now, I'm gonna flip over to my other account here and I'm gonna go to the data depot. I'm gonna go to my projects. This is my other account. This is my, uh, and you'll see that I got the training project in here. So I can open up the training project on this side. <clears throat> And I'm going to add a new folder. And this is a training um, docs. Oops, docs. Now the folder should be created. Once again, there's my a notification that the folder is available. Now, I'm going to flip back to my other account and we're going to do a refresh on this project. Oops, wrong folder. 
training project. There it is, the new one I just created. And you see the training docs is in there. So these two projects are synchronized. So anything I do on one will now show up in the other. Um, and of course, we can go ahead and add files. I'm gonna go ahead and add, it do a file upload. <clears throat> All right, so this is uh, the file upload, and this is exactly how it works in projects. This is also how it works in your My Data. You can click Choose Files, which is what I'm going to do, uh, or you can drag and drop files as well. So let me uh, do a new. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and choose a file. So I don't have the shortcut on this machine. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and upload a file here. And it's going to be this vSlice MLX, this MATLAB file. And I'm going to click Begin Upload. Once again, this is actually launching a job in the back end. And so it's going to go ahead and queue it up. It's going to run it, and it's already uploaded it, which is great. Now I'm going to flip back to my other alter ego here, and we're going to see if that file is in there. That yep, folder's still empty, so it needs a little bit for it to cycle itself through. Oh, actually, did I uh, put that in the, I did not put it in that directory. So I'm gonna go back to projects here. If you notice, you do get a, a cute little um, uh, breadcrumbs that you can follow and go back to where you are. So I'm gonna go back to my training project and I should see it in there. And there it is. my vslice.mlx file. <clears throat> All right. So the idea here is the projects can be uh, modified. Now, the big thing is, is once this data is in here, if there's any time you want to make modifications to it, you want to edit it, you want to run it, uh, the big suggestion is now to copy that to your local and then copy it back, uh, especially if it's a Jupyter Notebook. All right, so notebooks have to, can only be ran through the My Data, uh, My Data folders right now. So if you have any notebooks inside of my projects, you're gonna need to copy those into My Data to be able to use them. All right, and we'll go into that here in a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, um, the next thing is that we have is the shared with me. We're gonna go ahead and, and walk through that now. So I have my data, I got my projects, I'm gonna click on share with me. And once again, this is different than uh, file, than the actual um, projects. These are existing, uh, essentially a separate file system. What we have here is this is a list of all the files that have been shared with me personally uh, from other users. Um, <clears throat> and with this, essentially, I can go ahead and I can click open folders. So I'm gonna click this folder open. These are the files which are inside the folder that he has shared. We have some MATLAB files, looks like. Uh, we have some input files, looks like there's some Python code as well. And this is all information that's shared. I can make modifications to it as I need to. I can preview them. <clears throat> so we have a notebook here called Shot Gathers. Maybe I'll bring that and do a quick preview on that notebook and see if this is a notebook I want to modify. So here it is, here's all the, all the code for it. You know, I can say, oh, that's not what I'm looking for, so I can escape out. Uh, I can also pull up code, let me look at this Python code here. I can, so there's the Python code, all right? So if I wanted to now, I can also view the metadata. There probably isn't any metadata in right now but I can add some. So I can add some metadata, I can say it's Python, uh, shot gather, uh, strata, uh, seismic, you know, and whatnot, what all the ones that I can do, and I can go ahead and click my metadata and save that. <clears throat> And once it's been saved, you'll get your notification saying, hey, update's been successful. You'll also get your list of updates here. It looks like I have quite a few notifications that I haven't actually cleared out yet. But if you ever click up here, you'll get a list of all the notifications that you've had. 
So in case you want to see if you missed one, you can go up there and check it out. And it's still loading, so I'm going to go back to my main screen here. <clears throat> All right, let's go back to the data depot. All right, um, that's shared with me. There's also, if you notice, there's box.com. So we, you can hook up your box.com account to design safe as well and transfer data that way. Uh, so essentially if there's, I think my box.com needs to be rehooked. Yeah, and it looks like I need to regrant the, uh, the permissions. Uh, <clears throat> But the way the box.com accounts work is you can now move stuff from box into your local, work on it, put it back into box and so on. Um, you, what you need to do is uh, sync it through your desktop. So if you have a box uh, account set up, put your files that you want to share with design safe into your box and then um, copy them through. And then the last one that you want to look at with the, uh, in the data depot is the published data. So published data is publicly available data that has been cited and published uh, uh, in, in research works. <clears throat> As you can imagine, there's quite a few. So these are all the files available we can search. So I'm going to actually search for our PI, Helen. And these are the hits that I have uh, from, from her. We have a PDF file, we've got some folders. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and open up one of these folders. Um, here's a documentation file, that's always important. We can look through there. There's photo pages, um, there's a JPEG. I believe we can um, do a preview on that JPEG image. So there's a JPEG image preview on that. So we can uh, click through there. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's any metadata. There is metadata, so we can view what the metadata is. There's the title, the name, the PI is on it, what the description is, start date, end date. And if we go to the folder, we should be able to view the experiments on that. All right. Of course, we still have our breadcrumbs. So I'm gonna go and click back to this project here. Oops. Let's try that again. All right, there we go. Okay, so we can also look at um, some of the system data here. If I click on information, this will give us also what the group is with the folder. We can view the metadata here. We can view what the experiments are that were run. Um, this also gives you a link to the file. You can click on that. It'll open up the browser and link us to that experimentation file. So here's the experiment. Um, and we have all the folders inside there. Once again, we can view the metadata on that. and we get some more additional information. Once again, this is in the published, so this is all the publicly available data we have. You can, of course, <clears throat> let me pull this up here. If you, need, if you want to use this work uh, and build your research on an existing research work, you can copy that into your My Data folder. Uh, and then, of course, you can say which folder it is you want to copy it into. If you just want to keep it over there, you just say, all right, I'm going to go ahead and copy this to Charlie. This will probably take a while, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that right now. But this is essentially how you would take an existing research project, copy that to your local, uh, to, to your My Data space, and then be able to continue that research or use that as a starting point to uh, move your research work forward. All right. <clears throat> okay, so essentially that is uh, everything, all the, all the bits and pieces that are inside of uh, the data depot. Uh, the newest one, of course, being the My Projects, allowing you to collaborate with other users in DesignSafe uh, and see what they can, uh, they can set up for you. Okay, uh, when we go to Jupyter, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna come back here. We're gonna revisit the My Projects. We're gonna copy some stuff out of here and launch them into Jupyter and see what they look like. Okay. 
All right, so the next thing we wanna look at is uh, the discovery workspace. So I'm going to go, uh, I'm sorry, back to the discovery workspace. We're gonna look at the research workbench. Um, so let's go to the other discovery workplace. I'm sorry, the space here, discovery workspace. All right, let's go ahead and maximize this window and we're gonna check out what this has for us. All the apps are loading. A couple things, but just like I saw in the slides, we have our application tray. So these are all the apps which are available for us. Um, we have a couple versions of OpenSeas. There is a single processor. There is a, uh, the express version, which is probably the version you guys will want to run here. Um, so actually, that's not that's a single process, but it's still running on multiple uh, processors, I do believe. Uh, we have the parallel ad circ, we have regular ad circ, ParaView, MATLAB. Uh, we're going to go ahead and launch one of these. Also, I want to show you that you do have access to your files as well. So you can select where you want your data to come from for any of these files. And if you notice, you can get access to the public data as well. So you can select public data. You can browse to where it is, what data set you want to use as your input files for your application, and then run through your app. But we're going to go ahead and click on my data here. And what I'm going to do now is we're going to uh, run OpenSeas Express. So we select an application. Uh, it gives you a quick heads up on what the application does, how it works. Like I said, most of the applications do have a little bit of, uh, of a description for it. Some of them actually also have also have some documentation. So I'm gonna go and pull up OpenSeas SP. So this is a single parallel interpreter is what it uses. Uh, you can click on the documentation to get a little bit more information on it. Now, what it wants now is information to run, all right? So what we can do is it wants an input directory. And uh, the director of the development team here at TAC, who put most, who basically organized all this, put it together and did a lot of programming and work himself, uh, has set up some uh, some great uh, sample files for us to use. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to use one of those sample files. We can also, by the way, if I wanted to, we can also drag and drop our files in here. So we don't actually have to pull it. Let's say this is the directory I want to use. Um, I can go ahead. Oops, that's not right. Let's go back to Charlie here. All right, so now I can click on select. I can select which file it is I want to use. So I can go ahead and select that and it'll automatically input that in for me. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use uh, our sample file here. I'm going to go and copy that. And paste that up here. We also have the cute little check bars that's validating the work to make sure that everything is set up right. Um, because it's going to want a script to run, so I'm going to give it the the TCLs and the tickle script, this one right here. Once again, you can also drag that in. Uh, so that's the name of the script. And it wants some information about the job. Um, so I'm gonna go and say, all right, it suggests, I'm gonna go ahead and give it an hour for it to run. And it gives a job name. Let's say Charlie Open Seas. And it's gonna want an output location. Now everybody's directory here has an archive folder. So if you see, here's my archive folder. And it has got a, uh, a default name that goes in there, which is gonna be jo uh, archive jobs, and then uh, today's date, uh, what the job name was, and what the job ID is. So all right, so here we have all of our information. We have all the check boxes, meaning all the information is good. I'm just gonna go and click on run. It's gonna, once again, it's gonna submit the job uh, to our machines to run. Excuse me. Machine's gonna run it. It's gonna go and throw it in the queue. So now it comes up as pending. And we so have some jobs running as well still. It's going to go ahead and uh, put this job in pending mode and then we'll get an updated, uh, we'll get an updated status here very shortly that it is queued up and then running.
Now, of course, we'll get notification when it runs and we'll get notification when it finishes. So then we can come back and we can see what the data looks like. Okay, while that is uh, running, we're gonna continue on here. Uh, next thing I wanna show you guys is running MATLAB, since that seems to be a, a very popular application that is available on DesignSafe. And I'm gonna let that stay pending. <clears throat> now, I can go ahead and do other work. I don't have to wait for this job to actually finish and actually finish running. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to MATLAB now. Oops. So I'm gonna just run the regular MATLAB. Um, I'm gonna maximize my window again so we can see what's going on. Now, if you notice, we run MATLAB. Here's the documentation for MATLAB, just like we've seen before. Everything you're gonna notice has a very similar look and feel to it, and that's something we did on purpose. Uh, it wants a maximum job time, so I'm gonna say, all right, you know what? Uh, this job is gonna take an hour as well. It needs a job name, so I'm gonna call this M slice or V slice. Uh, let's call it V slice two, since I have a V slice one running already. Once an output directory location, and I'm gonna go ahead and click run. Now, so this is gonna launch my MATLAB session. So essentially what it's doing is it's gonna launch MATLAB in the background. It's going to be running in an interactive session. So we're gonna wait here a little bit and it's gonna pop up saying, hey, your interaction, oh, my OpenSea's job finished, if you notice. It's gonna say, all right, your interactive job is ready and I can just go ahead and launch it as soon as we're ready. All right, so now it says your interactive session has started. So we're ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and click on connect. Now, it launches this window for us, which is essentially a, uh, it's an interactive window, kind of like you would see on your desktop, but it's running inside the browser. It's running in what we call a VNC session. <clears throat> so now this is MATLAB. So this is what you guys are used to looking at for those MATLAB users out there. And it works exactly the same way. You can open files up, you can add new files. And if you notice, I just clicked open there. This is my data off of DesignSafe. So these two are actually integrated. So I'm curious to see here. So if you kind of notice, it gives you a little bit of file structure, but this my data, that is your data that is from DesignSafe. So if I look at the stuff here, I'm gonna go back to the data depot, you'll see that I have the exact same <clears throat> go to my data here. The exact same file structures that are available here are available in my VNC session. So here's all the folders. Here I have this MATLAB file that I had opened earlier that uh, see if it runs. I haven't had a chance to load it yet. Oh, there it is. It's just a simple demo of uh, 3D space. And of course it wasn't able to bring it in. I wonder why I can't open it, that's odd. Hmm. All right, let's, uh, let's look at another file I have. I should have uh, another MATLAB directory here. If not, I have one in my data depot that I can copy into my data and we could run that way. Well, let's do that. So let's go back to the data depot. <clears throat> let's go to files which are shared with me. This is one of my files that I have, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm gonna go into the user's directory who's shared the files with me, open up the MATLAB folder, and I'm gonna pull one of these out at random. Um, let's do this, let's do the transform file. Yeah, let's do the PF transform. So I'm gonna say, all right. This is a little bit of navigation, it's actually kind of, the navigation is a bit tricky because we tried to make it as easy as possible. Um, so it, it, it might not be intuitive at first, but you'll see that it actually does make sense once you see how everything links. All right, so I wanna copy this file. This is a MATLAB script. 
that I want to copy into my local directory, all right? So we're going to go and do that right now. I'm going to hit copy. It's going to give me my data. And now I can go through here and I can select which folder I would like this to copy to. So I'm going to tell it to copy to my, I'm going to go and say, let's copy it to my test director. If I just wanted to copy it to my root, my data, at the very bottom you see that copy to Charlie, just click that, it'll copy it through. If you want a subdirectory to copy to, just select the subdirectory. So I'm going to select that. Once again, what that does is it launches a job. And so our, our uh, job in the background is going to execute. It's going to copy the folder over and give me a, a nice um, notification when it's done. <clears throat> So make sure that went over. I'm going to click on my data. I'm going to click on test. And I do have that transform file in here. So I'm going to go back to my VNC session. Uh, go to my data here. Open up test. Looks like I have a demo MATLAB file in there as well. I know what that one is. Let's go run the demo. Oh, that's just a simple demo. That should be just fine. But then the other one should have ran as well. Uh, let's go add the path. Yep, there it goes. And there's my little demo file running. <clears throat> just like you would expect to see in MATLAB, except now if it's running in a browser in a virtual session. <clears throat> um, Let's see what that other file was. This one might take a little longer to run. Just viewing it. Yeah, it might take a little longer to run. That's all right. Okay. Um, once you're done with it, you have your file saved. You save it once again. Anything you save here goes into your My Data, back to your Data Depot. Uh, whenever you're set, just close it out. And close out the window. This will end the VNC session. It's all right. The VNC is going to die. You just close your window and say, all right, I'm done, hit close, and now you're back, and that, um, this, the vSlice 2 that we're running should be finished. <clears throat> okay, um, so the next thing that we want to look at, and this is probably one of the cooler features that is now available on DesignSafe, is the use of Jupyter Notebooks, okay? As you can kind of see, I have a lot of notebooks in my, uh, my directory there's a lot of notebooks that are shared with me because it's the best it's the programming environment that we've opened up and given you guys to be able to have access to um, the notebooks are very easy to use uh, they're very simple to create and we're before I go in there let's talk a little bit about what how the notebooks are structured <clears throat> All right, so we're going to proceed through. All right, so your notebooks are structured. We have, you're going to see there's a code cell and there's a markdown cell. Uh, your markdown cell is essentially descriptions and it takes, it's, it's essentially just like a HTML. In fact, it's a, uh, it's a superset of HTML, which means that HTML, uh, HTML markdown code can go in there and it'll go ahead and render it properly. And the code cell is essentially where you're going to be putting all your code. Uh, we have separate kernels available. Uh, there is a Python kernel and the R kernel, and I believe also a bash kernel. Uh, so any markdown cells, you can add headings, uh, you can add lists, you can add, uh, you can add ordered sublists if you like. Because it's once again, because I, it's a markdown, it's, you can take pure HTML and put it in there. And then of course, for the research work, uh, which is a, the beauty of it, it can even do latex. So you put in a latex format like we have on the screen and it'll go ahead and uh, apply the latex math to it. <clears throat> okay, so the way the workflows work, and I, already, I kind of talked about this already, you'll essentially be organizing your computational program into pieces. All right, pieces that naturally go together, you're gonna be kind of organizing them in. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm having allergy issues today. And for those of us who are in Austin, you understand allergy issues are a daily thing, no matter when. <clears throat> so 
So uh, essentially, once you break your parts up into uh, related ideas, you put your code in there, you put your details in there, and then mark stuff that needs to be executed to together, uh, together in the same code cell, and, and then be able to, so that way you could run the pieces as you need to. And we'll, we'll pull up a couple demos here. All right, um, so how do you want to structure this thing? Essentially, let traditional paper lab notebooks be your guide. Uh, you're essentially, what you're doing is keeping historical record of the analysis and how you're exploring it, All right? Uh, the notebook is, is not meant to be anything other than a place for experimentation and development. So essentially, you know, this is where you're gonna be uh, describing what your experiment is and how you're developing it. And you can split notebooks up when they're too long or, you know, split them up by topic, however you see. If you ever do a, you know, do a Google on what other people have done and see if you can apply what they have done to their notebooks to build yours. All right, here's some really quick shortcuts. Um, I'll, like I said, I'll leave these up there because they're actually really, use, really useful to have. Uh, shift enter is run the cell. So if you have a cell of data in there, if you click shift enter, it'll run it for you. Um, control enter, you run, this, run the cell, and, it, and, and essentially the focus stays on the cell. And you can read through this, alt enter, run the cell and insert a new one below. Uh, we have command mode and edit mode. So escape and enter are the two used to flip back and forth. Uh, and then we're gonna do a little bit of, uh, well, let's, let's go back to the hands-on with our Jupyter. All right. So let's go ahead and launch our notebook. And I think I lost my window, there it is. Okay. So we, uh, let's go ahead and launch Jupyter and we'll play around with some stuff. I'll show you guys a sample notebook here. I'm gonna go bring Jupyter up. So this is the window we're looking at. You're gonna click on proceed to Jupyter Hub. This comes up to our login screen. So if you click login, log in with your same uh, credentials you use to log into DesignSafe. Uh, my server is already running, so I'm just going to go and go ahead and say, let's go to my server. The other button you'll see is essentially start my server. Now, this is what we were looking at before in the slides. You have, uh, you want to go into your my data location. This is the same my data that is reflected in the data depot. If you notice, all my files are exactly the same. The what you do now is you can open up an existing notebook, which I, I, I might go ahead and do. If you want to create a brand new one, here is where your uh, notebooks are. So you click on new, you can do a text file. All right, we can do a new folder, terminal window. Uh, we can do a bash session or Python 2, Python 3, or R. These are the notebooks that are available to us. Okay, and, what if, and we're not gonna go too much into any of the details. Uh, we have some upcoming webinars coming up where we do a uh, introduction to Python, advanced Python, intro to R and advanced R. Uh, and we'll be using the notebooks primarily for those webinars as well. But here I just want to give you guys a walkthrough so you see what is available to you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull up one of these uh, intro to contour plotting with R. So I'm going to pull up this notebook uh, that I created in the past. I have this data file. It's contour data one dot dat file. It is in a matrix format and it's sitting in my data on uh, design safe. So if I were to actually click on that, go to Design Safe, and click on uh, where's that directory at? It is My Data Contour Data. So let's go to there, My Data. So we can just get a view of what the file looks like. Let's go back to Charlie. So I'm in the test directory. All right, we'll go to the Contour Data. And I believe that was what I'm looking at here is contour data one. So let's go ahead and pull up the contour data one file. Um, it should be a text file, but I don't have a .txt, so we may not have a preview available for that. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And I'm gonna go ahead and, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and copy it in, uh, Copy that. Let me try to select that. Contour data one. Yep, can do it because the names is names different. 
I'm still going to go and copy that just into my local my data file here. I'm going to say copy to Charlie. And let's go back to Charlie. I just want to look at what that file looks like, just so you guys can see it. <clears throat> and contour data one. Let's look at the details on that. I'm going to rename this now. <clears throat> I renamed this as TXT. And should have that cut, that rename. Yep, folder file has been renamed. Now I should be able to do a preview on that because it should understand that uh, the file extension. <clears throat> so, and there's my preview. So it's not a very big file at all, but that's some data in there. Okay, so we have some data sitting, a bunch of numbers, uh, looks like they're floating point numbers um, between, looks like negative one and positive one. So let's go back to our notebook here. All right, so there's our, there's our file. Um, and we can do quick cute little commands. So I can go ahead and fill a contour data plot with it. So here I filled up, uh, I filled up the contour uh, and go and went ahead and put that in the slide in the uh, cell for me. So the way if you're looking at this, here we have our header cell uh, or a, a markup cell. So we can put some data in there. Here's a coding cell for it. Um, so I can go and code that up. I can change the colors around. This is, this is uh, all done in R, so I can do some, uh, put some contours and put some color palettes in there and change the color around a little bit. Um, still does not show me too much. I can put a wireframe on it, so I can do a little wireframe. It's like, ah, that makes a little bit more sense than what I was seeing up here. Once again, we can change the color so it can make it look a little better. And now I see, ah, I got this really unusual sine curve. Uh, with a couple peaks and valleys in there. Uh, and then we can do some other stuff too. We can, we can modify the camera angle where, where it's viewed at and what it's looking at. So essentially this is what you can use a notebook for. And of course, you can go a little bit more, uh, a little bit more in depth with a notebook. You can, I'm gonna actually look at, um, you know, we can do fun stuff as well. We can, here's a, a, a Python, uh, collaboration I or Python I did of uh, the Jacoby iteration. Uh, so here's an algorithm that uses uh, the Jacoby iteration to solve uh, uh, solve AX equals B. Oh, I lost my mouse. There it is. You know, so I could run this, just a little Python code that I wrote uh, for a demo in class and be able to solve the uh, solve solve for X. <clears throat> And of course, we can go in even uh, a little bit more in depth with what these notebooks look like. And I'll give you a quick example of what one of, my, one of our Design Safe colleagues has done. So he created a project uh, called, so go to my projects, called Jupyter Notebooks for Fun. So we're going to go and pull that up. And he's got this notebook called Filter Numerical Instability Demo. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and copy that to my uh, demo folder. Uh, this will be the last thing we demonstrate and then we'll open it up for some questions um, and see, so this is what the demo looks like. So, you know, we've got uh, some, he's got some code in there, he's got some windows, he's got some graphs. <clears throat> So we're going to go ahead and copy this. I'm going to go and copy it to my data, or let's try that. I, let's go and copy it to my test folder here. I should get a notification that the copy has been complete, which it has. <clears throat> let's go back to um, my notebooks here. File open and I'm going to open it up and test and we'll see what he has copied with me. And here's his notebook that he has. To run it, it doesn't say run cells. I'm sure I'm, let's clear all the output first. And so run all.
goes through there, runs all the code for me in each of the lines. If there's any extra output, it'll go, it'll go ahead and output it out. And then finally go ahead and plot the result for us. And so we have essentially this uh, notebook that is doing some scientific research for us, creating a couple graphs for us that we can then take and we can save these images and we can put these images into um, uh, we can put these images into our research paper as we need. The images that that Jupyter creates are all PNG files. So create the PNG file if you need to you can convert that to a JPEG. <clears throat> So, okay, um, let's go back to our slides here. And so essentially what we did is we did navigation of all the little, of all the uh, tools which are available to us in DesignSafe. A little bit about what DesignSafe's about. We looked at how, to pub how we can search our published data, uh, navigate an experiment, view metadata on it, uh, download any of the files that we were looking for. We can copy those into our local, our local my data files. Uh, how we can share files with other people, how we can upload files to it, uh, creating projects, collaborating with other users on projects, and then what our discovery workspace is, uh, how the applications are sitting in there, how we can launch those applications, uh, how we can use uh, MATLAB sessions and view the data, and then of course how we can launch Jupyter. Um, I'd like to give a thanks out right now to uh, some of the people involved in this project. Um, Ellen Rathje, who's our PI, Tim Cockrell, who's our, our project manager here, uh, Jamie Padgett, who uh, is actually, uh, she's one of the co-PIs, Scott Brandenburg, who's one of the researchers associated with DesignSafe, uh, Dan Stanzione, who's another co-PI, he's also the director here at TAC, uh, Steve Mock, who's the director of the ACI development team, Josue, who's uh, been a big help creating this, most of this, Greg Jansen, he's our user experience guy, uh, Joe Stubbs, who was essential in key creating the uh, Jupyter Hub, uh, Matt and Hedda, who are our graphic designers here, and Juni, another one of our uh, educators, and uh, uh, Jason Allen, whose name isn't here, but who decided to come here and give us moral support and answer some questions for us. So, all right, with that, uh, I want to tell you guys we have some future webinars coming up. And so we showed you some of the, what the, some of the features are in DesignSafe, how to use those features, how to integrate those features into your, uh, into your research. Uh, but I would like to say we're going to do an introduction to Python and an introduction to Matplotlib, and we have an advanced Python uh, session coming up as well. And then we're going to do the similar things with R, data analysis and plotting with R, and then do an advanced R session as well. So, so look, be on the lookout for those four webinars coming up this, uh, this semester. Uh, I would also like to do an advanced design safe seminar where we can go more into how design safe is structured, how you can actually make design safe calls from a command line using the API uh, and not have to go through uh, the user interface. Uh, those are things like we'd like to cover in a, in a more advanced setting. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, uh, feel free to email us at training at designsafe-ci.org or you can go to design safe help and fill out a user ticket and submit that to us. Uh, and with that, uh, we'll open it up for questions uh, regarding any of the topics we talked about, uh, any features that we have, any features that uh, you'd like to see, uh, things that were coming forward. I will say that the next uh, cloud resource that we will be hooking into, we have box.com right now, uh, we'll be hooking into Dropbox uh, in, the, in the near future. Uh, we'll also be creating the ability to publish projects, those are also coming. Um, we will also be creating what we're calling a training uh, uh, training repository so all the training slides all of the training uh, demo code all the all the uh, uh, de demonstration um, demonstration Jupyter notebooks will all be there for you to download and use and uh, and build off of okay so are there any questions um, feel free to text those to us. If anybody has anything to add, I know we have some other uh, TAC guys here and probably some other design, folk, uh, design state folks here as well. Uh, if you have something to add, feel free um, to add that as well. I'm gonna go ahead and end the session of sharing my, my screen and we'll go back to the cameras.
Okay, thank you, Josue. Yeah, the my projects will be available in the interactive session soon, but it's not available there right now. So essentially, like I was mentioning uh, during the during the talk or during the webinar, it is a a separate file system, and so it's not hooked up all the way in there. For now, if you have stuff that's in my projects that you want to modify or use, you can copy those into your my data, make your modifications to them, and then copy them back into the project. I'm just going through the text to see if there's any questions that have been left unanswered. Looks like everyone got them all. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Josue, but is the is the source code and all that stuff for Design Safe is on in Bitbucket, isn't it? Yeah, there you go. Design Safe is an open source project, so you can always look at the code. Uh, but it is pretty wired into our uh, internal our, our internal infrastructure here at TAC. Thanks, Josue. Okay, <clears throat> so it looks like we did end a little bit early today. I appreciate everybody for coming. I appreciate your time. I uh, appreciate your interest in Design Safe. Uh, like I said, they're, be on the lookout for the four other uh, webinars coming up later this uh, semester. And please check out TAC's website, www.tac.utexas.edu. TAC also offers a lot of other uh, training, which is outside the realm of Design Safe, but still involved enough that you might, have, might find some interest in it. Um, oh, thank you, Josue. There's also a, uh, a Slack team for uh, Design Safe as well, designsafe-ci.slack.com. Uh, feel free to sign up there. Uh, that is essentially where a lot of, if you have, there's a training channel there as well. If there's any training you'd like to see or any questions you have explicitly for us, uh, feel free to go there, join the training channel at designsafe-ci.slack.com uh, and we'll be able to interact with you directly there. Uh, her host way has posted that in the uh, chat window uh, for reference. <clears throat> okay, uh, if there aren't any other questions, we're going to go ahead and, cl and close the webinar. Uh, I once again appreciate you guys for coming in and joining us today. Uh, feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Um, we'll be available to you. Uh, email us at, at the uh, training. Uh, training at Design Safe. Uh, also go, if you have any other training we did some last semester, feel free to go check out those slides. Those are under the Learning Center in the training archive. All right, I appreciate your time, everyone. Thank you very much.